Peggy 18 The north is a dangerous place for small buggies like yours. Afraid you're gonna need something with a little more muscle. Fundamentally, a first-person shooter needs to pull the player into the action, to have him ducking and dodging in his chair what he sees coming at him on the screen. But with Rage, we've gone beyond that. There's so many different things to do. There's so many characters to interact with. There's this world to explore. There's vehicles to drive. So it just becomes immersive on so many levels that when the player is in it, he's engaged with not just the action, but the story, the characters, the world. The Wasteland in Rage is kind of like a plate that the rest of the game sits on. As you travel around, you'll discover that there's these entrances to bandit hideouts and mutant caves and old sewers and things. Listen, don't you go trekking around down there without some serious firepower. In Rage, we try to make the game open but directed. Player choice is very important in Rage. Uh, the Wasteland is more than just a setting for the story. It's its own gameplay level, for lack of a better word. It's the thing that stitches the story and it stitches the action all together. We want you to follow this action movie experience, but we allow you some freedoms to kind of explore different things. Each of the missions does kind of surround the story. For instance, we have an electrobolt for the crossbow weapon. Electricity, water, that makes sense. Well, Wellspring sits on top of a well. So the obvious gameplay thing is here. Okay, you shoot the electrobolt in the water. It electrifies anybody that's in the water and they die. As you travel through the wasteland, you meet very interesting, very over-the-top characters. Great! Muy bueno! We are simpatico, eh? And we feel that creating memorable characters that offer you memorable missions really kind of helps drive the whole experience forward. The interactions that the player will have with these characters should hit something in the emotional nerve of the player. So we've gone that extra distance to make key characters really feel alive. So you know when you go talk to Dan or the uh, J.K. Styles, the producer of that crazy TV show, or the sheriff, you forge these relationships with them. And they give you lots of bits of the story, but you live through the rest of those elements. We felt that crafting interesting people made everything fit together. I know you got questions, but we gotta get moving. You're uh, driving across these landscapes and you're going visit people here and they're giving you jobs to do. So I hear you have a message from our friend Dan. Let's have it then. One of the things that we discovered with Rage is when people saw us drive around, shooting other cars, they immediately said, I wanna do that multiplayer. So we've taken the best parts of the vehicle combat from the single player experience and added a really fun, intuitive multiplayer experience with it. We also have this cooperative style gameplay that allows a player to get with a friend, run through a level that's maybe changed a little bit from things that they've seen in the game, and then we roll a little bit of fiction into that. So it's taking all the kind of visceral in your face action, but you're doing it with a buddy. We really have the best of both. We have great co-op missions and some great vehicle multiplayer. We want to provide this smorgasbord of different things that the player can do so that they can become immersed with other things rather than just a critical story path. But if you want, you can go to the store, get a couple more grenades, outfit yourself with some new ammo types, jump back in the car and head for the next action. And we're okay with that.